Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. We are in the month of November, and, and, and we are so excited. You know why? Because the Lord said this is the month of boldness. The month of boldness. Now, he's not just telling us to be bold. He's telling us, I'm filling you with the spirit of boldness. Praise God. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you along this line. And I'm trusting the spirit of God for wisdom, for utterance, and for deep revelation of his mind. I told you this many times. It's always important that we bring forth the mind of God concerning any matter. Now that's what the, the, the teacher of the word does. The teacher of the word is not just proving scriptures. The pre teacher of the word is telling you, teaching you the mind of God. And his teachings will confirm scriptures. Please understand there's a difference. Any intelligent man can put scriptures together and give you something. Okay, But then one who's called to teach the word of God, his job is to explain the mind of God and as he's explaining it, you will find out that his words is confirming the scriptures. That's the difference. So one who's tried, one is trying to see how scriptures can fit in. The other is expressing the mind of God. And then you are realizing, oh, that's what the scripture means. Oh, that's what the scripture means. That's it. Now, as little as that looks, it's deep. It's deep and so relevant in your life. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say with me now with faith in your heart because listen, it's a month of boldness. So be bold to receive what is yours. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Say, Father, I demand from you right now my daily bread and I receive it in jesus name amen praise god in this month of november you will not lack oh no 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 you are not supposed to lack and i'm telling you now the mind of god is that you don't lack now i'm prophesying into your life as one sent by god to you i'm declaring over you that lack and want is far from you in this month of november in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare it is well with you. I declare your going out and your coming in every day of this month will give you good news. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will live with expectations in your going out and you will come back with fulfillment. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 4. Now, this is the early church and how they began. There are lots of things to learn from them. But I want to show us, um, I'll give you the background story that we're actually reading from verse um, 29. But I'll give you the background story. Now, you remember Peter and John had healed uh, the, the man uh, crippled at the beautiful gate and the, the whole news spread about it. People began to talk about it and the Pharisees and the, 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 those elders, they felt, ah, this thing is getting out of hand. We need to do something. So they sent for the apostles and, and they began to interrogate them and the, the, the purpose of their interrogation is actually to stop them from the mystic the, the command that jesus has given to them to go preach and so they had this back and forth and finally they let them go and with strict warning I don't, we don't want you to preach in that name again and we are ordering you not to preach in that name okay so now they left and the bible said they went back to their own company now you see, after they had been threatened, okay, they went back to their own company. They could have sat down in their company and start discussing and say, well, you know how it is now. We have to be careful. We have to, so that we don't offend these people. You know, they are the ones in power. If we offend them, we may get into trouble. 
And that's what some people would have done. But no, they did what was right. What did they do? They didn't go discussing the matter. They went to pray. They gathered to pray, praise God. And they began to, I come in and they say, if you want to walk in the spirit of boldness, you must learn to pray. There are no two ways about it. You must be a person of prayer. And when I say prayer, a person of real communion with God. I'll show you something now. Now watch this. Verse 29. And now they've been talking to the Lord. And now Lord, behold their threatenings. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Now remember what the church was. We don't want you to preach again in that name of Jesus. That was what they were threatened about. They said, if you do that again, we'll deal with you. So don't preach again in the name of Jesus. Okay? They said, okay, we've heard you. We'll get back to you on the matter. <laughs> and then they went back and they began to pray. And they said, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Listen, they didn't pray, oh God, destroy all those enemies that want to stop us from preaching the gospel. Sometimes we have this defeat mentality and, and, and we want to, our enemies to be destroyed so that we will make progress. That mentality is wrong. God doesn't have to kill people so that you will make progress. God doesn't have to destroy people so that you will advance. God doesn't have to bring people down so that you will um, you will go up. He can create more rooms up there. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. So remove that mentality in your mind. Now, now, if God takes people down before you are lifted, that's his own choice. That's his own prerogative. He, he does that for himself. He knows why. Now, it could also be judgment for the people. But not because you demanded it as though that is needed before um, God does something else that is good for you. Not in all cases. In some cases, yes. But in, not in all cases. But then you must have the mentality. You must have the mentality of not thinking that somebody must go down first. Because if that's your mentality... You will sin. Yes. You would sin. And one thing God, the, the wisdom of God teaches us is not to sin. See? Now, the same situation David found himself in. Now, David was one person who had every reason, every right to pull down Saul, who was king then. I'm telling you, he had every physical and spiritual reason. Spiritual reason. He has seen. First of all, the Spirit of God have departed from Saul. Number two, Samuel came to his house, poured oil on him and said, God said, you are the next king. And the king who's sitting on the throne right now, the Spirit of God have departed from him. Are you who, who the Spirit of God is upon now by the, by the point of the oil? He you see the effects of that evil spirit on the king. You are the one who was called to come and play hard for him to drive or to keep his mind calm when the evil spirit begins to trouble him. So imagine being in that space where you see that the president of your nation is being troubled mentally. And, and you know that if this man isn't there, this man dies right now, you will be the next king. And you, you have all these great plans in your heart that you want to execute and, and let the people be happy because you've seen the failure of governance in this man. And not just that, you, you now know that his failure is not even natural. It's, it's, it's spiritually enhanced by an evil spirit. So you're dealing with the man himself. Then you're dealing with the spirit behind the man. And you have what it takes by the anointing of God's spirit and the goodness of your heart. And you are there in that space and you are seeing that. I'm telling you, it will be so easy for you to pray and say, God, when are you going to kill this man? 
Let's go. When are you going to take this man away? Then, as though to make the matters worse, this man is now looking for your life. He's truly a javelin directly at you. If that javelin had gotten you, you'd have been a dead man. He's carried the whole army to look for you at some points. And they, are, they had strict instructions to kill you. So you know that this man, if he has the chance, he would kill you. Now, who's the one that he wants to kill? The one who carries the anointing to replace him. So David had spiritual reasons. David had physical reasons. A self-defense to kill some. He had the opportunities also. But he did it. Why? Because his mentality was different. He knew that I don't need to take this man down for me to fulfill my destiny. God is the God of all flesh. He decides what happened. He decides whose turn and what time is your turn. So I'm not going to use my hand to, 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 you know what I'm talking about. And God was so pleased with David for that. That's why he says, see this David is a man after my heart. Praise God. He's, a man. He's just like me. Praise God. That's what it means. A man after my heart. He's just like me. I look at him and I see myself. Have you ever said that concerning someone before? Someone has said that concerning you before. I, I see myself. I see my little self in you. Praise God. Yeah. So these, these disciples, they, their mindset was right. They could have prayed, Father, destroy them. Scatter their counsel. Deal with them. Make them sick. Kill them. Because they are opposed to your truth. They are opposed to your gospel. They lock them up. Do you know that? Sometimes they flog them. And, 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 and their actions were completely against the truth and the gospel of Jesus Christ. They had every reason to make those demands. But what did they say? No, no, no. Grant unto your servants. I had a I learned this many years ago from the Lord. The Lord taught me this. He said, son, it's easier for me to get to you than to get to any of your enemies. Now, for those who think in their minds they have enemies, the Lord said, it's easier for me to get to you than to get to your enemies. So concentrate your mind on things that will make me get to you. Oh, that taught me so much wisdom. Because, 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 see, you can be praying, oh God, my boss is a wicked man. Remove him from that post. Remove him. And then in your mind, you're thinking, if he's removed from that post, the next person is my friend. The next person will do me well. Or I'll be the next person. And, and, and now, God will not just come because of a prayer and say, I'm moving him because you've asked. No. God, before taking a decision, will test that boss. Peradventure, the day God comes for his test, that boss decides to behave well. I'm sorry, God will not execute him. You remember the case of Sodom and Gomorrah? God said to Abraham, he says, the cry of Sodom has come up before me. And all the iniquities that they are doing. So I am now come down to see for myself if those things that I hear are so, and if not, then I'll know what to do. Lord, what are you talking about? You're the omniscient God. You mean you couldn't stay in heaven and see everything that's going on so then you need to come. But that's the way of the Lord. The complaint was made about their dealings with human beings. Oh, people just don't know the way God judges. I pray that the Spirit of God will open your heart to learn. You don't know the ways of God. The complaint was how Sodom was treating human beings. Now, the, you know the book of Genesis just gave us a summary. You just think it's just uh, because they, they, they were homosexuals and things like that. It's, it goes beyond that. The city was wicked. The city was wicked. I read somewhere that in, in Sodom then, that if a man comes into Sodom with a beautiful wife, and they will invite you, oh, someone will accommodate you. Guess what? At night, they will kill the husband, bury his body, and take over his wife. The city was wicked. 
But before God could take any action, he said, let me go and see for myself. And God came because if they do that to people, they will do that to him. Do you understand? That will show that it is their character. So God will judge them for doing it to him. And that's how God operates. Now imagine if that night, do you know even Lot tried to intercede? You know, like, look, you guys, see, these are my visitors. I have two daughters here who are virgins. I'm ready to give them to you. you know? But they say, no, it is those men. That has to tell you that this was really their character. And God brought his judgment upon Sodom because they did it to him. Now, these folks, these disciples, realize that it's better for us to release our faith to God to reach us and not to concentrate on our enemies. Stop concentrating on your enemies. Demand for more grace upon your life. If more grace is given to you, you will ascend above those enemies. And there will be there won't be a problem anymore to you. That's easier done than waiting every day and watching. Are they still there? Are they still there? Come on now. So look at what they said. Grant unto your servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. The challenge was don't speak his word again. They said, no, we want to speak your word, Lord, but this is what we need from you. Give us more boldness. Kayabaya. Hmm. And how? He said, by stretching forth thy hand to heal. Now, what offended those scribes and, and, and Pharisees? They saw the healing and now the disciples are saying, want to do some more praise god yeah want to do some more want to do some good works praise god and they were not just doing it to spite those guys no they were doing it because it was good works i come in that brother i pray the lord see as i'm sharing these things i'm trusting the holy spirit to give me specific utterance that will benefit you and as you're hearing me i I believe in my heart the Spirit of God is ministering directly into your heart, your own portion in this word. It says, By stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, verse 31, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they speak the word of God with boldness. Praise God. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. And as Azazia and Nabal come on the via. What has life tried to stifle you on? What, 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 is, what is life telling you you cannot do? It may be your health. It may be your finances. Maybe your health is telling you that you're going to die soon. Until a certain surgery be done on you. And, and you don't have the money for that surgery. You, you, you've looked around and, and you don't even know who to ask for that kind of money. You've tried to ask, but no one is, is, is responding properly to you. Ah, life is telling you, medical science is telling you, you're going to die. But God has given you an assignment to preach his word. What do you need? Grant unto your servant that with all boldness, Ayada Barakasaya, they will speak thy word by stretching forth your hand to hear. Can, can, can you believe God for a healing right now? I, I'm talking to you in your own body. Ayana Gadeske. Now, now you found yourself, you've not been so bold talking about healing because you're looking at yourself like they, they're going to question me that like if God can heal, why hasn't he healed me? I'm speaking to someone right now. Because I'm seeing you, I, I'm seeing a man, you, you have issues with your organ. I'm also seeing a lady, you, you're watching me, you're, you're listening to me. There is, there is a man, you have issues with some of your organs and you it has slowed down your walk 
to a great extent. All you keep hearing is take things easy, take things easy, manage it, manage it, manage it. And now it has affected even your own faith where healing is concerned. I'm speaking to a lady also. You have issues with your muscles. That's what I'm saying. You have issues with your muscles. But listen to me. I can, can, can we join faith together right now and pray this prayer? Father, grant unto your servants right now that I did this, that with all boldness they will speak your word. Stretch forth your hands, O Lord, upon these ones and restore their health right now. <laughs> yes, yes, the, 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 the power of God is coming all over you right now. I, I see there's a vibration taking place inside you right now. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Yes, yes, receive it right now in the name of Jesus. And rise up right now and begin to do what you couldn't do before. Get up. Begin to do what you couldn't do before. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I gabara asketo me na bridge. Kemaran for fire usu. I hear the Lord said, Rise up and go do my will as I have commanded you, and no man will be able to oppose you. Rise up, go speak my word to my children, and they will see signs and wonders walking by your word. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't be afraid. In Jesus' name, <laughs> amen. Praise God. The time is up. I, am, I love the anointing of God's spirit. Praise God. Receive what is yours. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.